For better picture quality, adjust tracking control on your VCR. Just like singing, oh, you beautiful doll. Remember that song? Well, why not join me in singing it? Just follow the bouncing ball.
And when people used horses if they wanted to go out for a ride, and oil lamps and candles if needed a light, there lived in a small country town, yes, a butcher, a baker, and a candlestick maker. With just over a week to go before Christmas, the townspeople were busy indeed and none more so than the candle maker and his young son, Tom. For in those days, quite small boys were expected to behave like grown men. God had been so good to him and blessed his home and his work. 
He showed his gratitude by giving his finest candles to shine upon the altar as an offering to God. so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Whenever I read these words of Jesus, I think of one of our own people, our friend the candle maker, like a good steward, chose his love for God by giving his most beautiful candles to light the cross upon our altar. I pray that all of us will always give in this same spirit to show our love for the Father, who blessed us with a Christ child. The family was up early next morning, for a busy week lay ahead. The candle maker had to deliver quantities of Christmas candles, of all shapes and sizes, to the outlying farms and villages. Hurry up, son. Coming, Father. Now, now. I'm not going away forever. I'll be back on Christmas Eve, in time for service. Look after your mother, son. And there are plenty of candles to be made. Don't worry, Father. Don't forget this week, I'm leaving you to make the second altar candle. I have made only one. And remember, both must be taken over to church by 4 o'clock Saturday. Yes, Father. Goodbye now. Goodbye. Bye, Father. With his father away and his mother extra busy getting ready for Christmas, young Tom was in charge of the workshop. With the task of turning out many candles a day. And then there was the altar candle for the Christmas Eve service on Saturday. Christmas Eve long ago, the church was made beautiful by the loving work of loving hands, just as churches are today. Then, as now, there was a manger where boys and girls would bring the white Christmas offering for the children's home. Father will be home soon. Tommy, you forgot. Run over quickly now. And be careful you don't drop them. I'm sorry I was 
late for the candles, Pastor. Never mind. You did do it. And just in time, too. Look who's coming. Well, son, did you make the church candle? Yes, Father. member of the family had his own sad thoughts that night. To think that a son of mine should make such a candle, a worthless candle that won't shine, and after all these years. Young Tom knew what his parents were thinking, that he had failed them, and that he had failed God. many years ago, but the candlemaker's son learned the meaning of Christian stewardship, just as we must learn it today.
on a hillside near Bethlehem, sat a very young shepherd, playing a gay, happy tune on his little wooden pipe. In that year, the Emperor of Rome had ordered all the people to be counted and taxed, each man in his own city. And so the highways were soon filled with travelers, returning to the towns where they had been born. On the road were a carpenter called Joseph and his wife, Mary. Their hometown, Bethlehem, was a city now filled with visitors, all looking for places to stay. And by twilight, Joseph and Mary were weary of searching. They had tried to find shelter for the night. And while people with plenty of money to offer were taken care of, Joseph and Mary were always turned away. Each place they stopped seemed to be full. Again and again they were disappointed and had to move on. When they came to the owner of one of the last inns, they were told that it too was full. But then the innkeeper remembered an old barn in back of his place of lodging. It was not much of a place, but Joseph and Mary were welcome to use it. This was where they would stay for the night. And in this old, dingy stable, the animals made room for the unexpected guests. As Joseph made Mary comfortable and the weary tourists took their rest, night settled over Bethlehem. And in the stillness of that holy night, the little town waited silently for the wondrous gift that was to be given. In the sky that night, in the sky above the sleeping city, a strange new star appeared, the star of Bethlehem, telling of the birth of a great new king to be cradled in a manger. And so it was that Christ the Savior was born in Bethlehem on that silent night so long ago. Nearby in the countryside, the shepherds were watching by their fires. Then with the star, appeared a light, bright with the glory of angels, angels who sang to them of the birth of a king in a manger in Bethlehem. Full of wonder and surprise, the shepherds hoped to see the child of whom the angels sang. They gathered their sheep together and started toward the town. From the hilltop they could see the star, and beneath it they knew they would find the stable whose manger held the heavenly king. On they came, and the first to arrive was the very young shepherd, playing his pipe. As he saw the baby with Mary and Joseph, 
he came close to the manger. Before the holy child, the shepherds all knelt and offered to him the beloved pipe, a sheepskin cap, and a little lamb. And when they had worshipped him, they would go to tell others of this wonderful thing that had happened. Far to the east, there were others who saw the star. In Turkestan, a princely astronomer sat studying his instruments. And suddenly in the sky above, the new star shone. In India, a king watched from the balcony of his marble-columned palace as the star grew larger and larger. And on the desert sands of Arabia, a ruler was gazing toward the heavens, seeing that same star as it told of the new king's birth. To them all, it meant that a king had been sent from God a king they would worship. Each one set out to follow the star and to bring to the child a gift of love. The astronomer boarded his ship. And sailed over the waves toward the guiding star. The Indian ruler, on an elephant, moved toward the mountains as the star went before him. And from Arabia, across the desert, came the third king on a camel. It was a long journey and a hard one for all of them. But as they followed the star, each came nearer to the land of Israel, where Herod ruled. King Herod also saw the star and sent for his counselors. To Herod's advisors, the star fulfilled a prophecy that a king should be born in Bethlehem, in the land of Judah. And while the eastern kings continued their journey toward Jerusalem, Herod was disturbed by this unwelcome news. Thinking surely that King Herod could direct them to the newborn child, the wise men came to his palace to seek his advice. Perhaps they would find the babe there, in the palace. Herod sent them to Bethlehem, saying, When you have found the child, tell me that I may worship him also. Of course, the wicked Herod had other plans, for he was jealous of the child king. But the wise men, who would be warned by God, were to return home another way. And so once more, the kings from the east took their gifts and followed the guiding star. It led them out the north gates of the city, on toward the Bethlehem hills. Then, above the little town, it seemed to stop. At last, they knew that here, in Bethlehem, they should find the newborn king. They did find him, and with him the young shepherd who had brought the first gift to the manger. They knew that the star had led them to this child who was the king they were seeking. The wise men went into the holy family and offered their gifts to the infant Jesus. Filled with awe and wonder, they knelt before him and put at his feet a crown of gold
A chest of frankincense. A jar of myrrh. And they worshipped him, the child of the line of David, the son of God, the king to be called Emmanuel. Thank <laughs> you.